Welcome to Disco's Tech Corner, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. So finally, Xbox has the new Xbox has been revealed. You know, Microsoft has shown us the new Series X, and I'm blown away. I think it looks cool. I think it's sleek design. Folk are saying like it's a gaming PC. You know, so well, we're getting to that stage now. That that's pretty much what they're going to be like. I don't see it being as big as they say because even if you look at an image, if you look at the controller next to the X, it sits probably the same. It may be a wider bit of a console, but you can have it on its side. So, I like the green light at the top. I think it's an awesome looking console. I think it looks sleek, and I can't wait to get, get a more hands-on approach with it. The one improvement that they have done that I was crying out for, absolutely crying out for from the last generation, the broadcast button, the capture button, finally they've added it. It's only been years in the making, but they finally added it. And see us going into those fucking menus, scrolling, choosing what we want, and that time that it takes, it fucks you up in your multiplayer games. When you sometimes the game pauses, gets shot at, things are happening, and you're sitting in a fucking menu trying to, and then when your Xbox freezes up and you've got to try and get it on, it's trying to make a decision. It's not the best experience in the world. I'm so glad they've just done it to a fucking button. Switch has got that shit, you know. So yeah, the one improvement that they've done that I'm really, really impressed with is that. And also, I like the D-pad. You know, it's more like the Elite D-pad. It's I think it's going to be a much better feel in the hand. So now let us look at specs. You know, the specs of the actual the heart of the machine. So having a look at this, it's going to have a custom Zen 2 process. You know, that's like having eight 3.6 gigahertz fucking CPUs in the beast. It's going to be an absolute monster. The GPU as well, having the custom AMD Navi based GPU, rolling it at 12 teraflops in RDNA, that's probably going to be about itself double the power of the Xbox X. And we're having 16 gigabytes of DDR6. This is going to be an absolute monster when it comes to its actual memory. There's going to be plenty of memory there to handle what's going on in the screen. So with all those three things, this machine is trying to boast it can do constant 4, 4K, 60 frames a second, with the possibility of 120. Don't know how that's going to work, don't know how the game developers are going to be, but it's going to be something that's a potential in the future, you know. So I don't know how it's going to do that, but that's what they say it's going to have a possibility of. And it says it's going to have four times the power of the Xbox X. Me, myself, I actually think that's where it's coming through with the CPU. With its graph, with the graphics potential, I think it's okay, but when it comes to CPU, certainly with the Xbox family, PlayStation as well, there's certainly bottlenecks when it comes to the CPU. And if you have a look at videos where people tried to build the PS5 and the Scarlet at the time, where they were getting the main bottleneck was in the CPU. So I think AMD, they're going to certainly fix that with the rising and going ahead. You know, this, these aren't cheap machines, they aren't cheap parts. These are, this is as top refined gaming PC as you can get. You know, it is a top end gaming PC. And the one thing is it's tuned, it's optimised for the parts that are inside it. I think this is going to be an absolute contender against... Well, I say current, current as of now was speaking, seven months in the line, ten months in the line, that's going to completely change. You know, gaming and PCs and upgrades, you know, you can do them for days on gaming PCs. We're stuck with this console until the Xbox Series X Pro or 2 or whatever the hell mid-generation console that's going to come out. But inside the box, it's also got lots of things to take the pressure off, like the CPU and whatever it can do to give you as much less bottleneck or anti-lag or that we can get, you know, it's got variable free rate, refresh rates, variable shading, those are things that, like for shading, it only shadows the parts of the game that are actually on the screen, you know, so it takes pressure off the console, takes pressure off the hardware. And it's also boasting almost zero load times, I think that's due to the NMVE SSD drives that's inside it, and these are going to become bloody industry standard, you know, over the last few years, this has become the standard for solid state drives. These things are, they don't even look like hard drives, look like fucking RAM, but... They also can transfer up to like two gigabytes a second, so pff, that's going to be night and day for these consoles. But having a look at them, I'm not sure the size it's going to be with. We would need a two terabyte minimum for the size of these games. You know what? The, what we what we've seen the detail, the quality, a two terabyte minimum. But look at this. Look at the price. Just look at the price in these images for how much these actual solid state drives are. So I'm not sure if we're going to get a two terabyte. It'll probably be a one, knowing that like for budgeting costs. But having it as a Series X. It might be that there's different stages to this. Or you've got a two terabyte model, four terabyte model, one terabyte model. I don't know. It's just having the name Series X. I feel that that's where they're going with it. There's going to be different models for different versions for you, for your different price ranges. What else is the Xbox Series X going to have as its backing? You know, it's also going to have the X Cloud. And the X Cloud is a wonderful thing that they're going to be. In theory, it's going to should be work. It should be awesome for us to be able to stream our games to any device. Being able to have all these backed up Xboxes and server cabinets everywhere. So that's what the xCloud pretty much is. It's like a bunch of Xbox S motherboards inside all these server server blades and a total absolute far from. So you're able to stream your games to any devices. Well, with this, 
instead of paying for xCloud, you're probably going to be able to get your Series X to be your xCloud, where you're able to stream through your internet to any device that you're any device that you is compatible anywhere that you are that you've as long as you've got the internet and i think that would be awesome it's certainly got the power to do this kind of stuff and i'm so intrigued as to where xbox is going with next generation i'm actually so excited so excited about what's coming with xbox this is going to be an absolute must for me so and then we looked at some games you know that hellblade 2 and hellblade 2 for myself wow this is the pinnacle almost pinnacally where gaming is most of the stuff that you could see was like pretty much apart from the actual face models where you can tell that, they're, you know, it's no real, it's it's a game. And sometimes I like that, you know, I know it's a game, I'm playing it. I didn't want to feel like it's real people. I like it like that. But when it comes to landscapes, my God, the feel, the, the depth of view, the textures, some of the screenshots that you've seen was as full realistic as you can get. I'd hard to find any photographer that can pinpoint the difference between some of the visuals in that game in real life. It was absolutely phenomenal. Really excited as, as to what's to come. Hellblade 2, I've never really played the first Hellblade, but I'm certainly really fancy playing this because this is probably one of the most beautiful games I've ever seen. Absolutely ever seen. Really did feel like a next gen leap. It, this feels like the next step, the next logical step, the actual next generation of gaming, where the X and the Pro were just built for 1080p. You know, those games were all built for 1080p, where then it got like upscaled or there was extra textures to make it part of 4K, but there's a lot more than pixels. You know, as I've learned for owning 4K setups, it's about the HDR. It's about the, the depth of vision. It's about the, the, the colours, the the details, the small things, the small things. No, it doesn't matter about the pixels. As you can tell, when you go to 8K and you lose that detail going from 4 to 8K, you actually lose small details. But yeah, actually having a look at that game, I can't wait to see what's coming. And for Halo Infinite, if Halo Infinite's half as good as what Hellblade looks like, I'm going to be buzzing for owning this system when it comes out. Another thing that's got me really excited about this console is bringing forward hardware. You know, everything you own for your Xbox One is compatible with your Xbox X. Connect, on the other hand, I'm not really sure, but if they're saying everything, then there's probably a good chance that your Connect's also going to work. There might be a port for your Connect, or there's going to be something for you. And Crossplay is another thing. You know, they've spent so much money bringing the original Xbox 360, everything forward for backwards compatibility. I'm so glad they're keeping that, and I'm so glad that that's something that are boasting coming forward, you know, for us all to be able to play our, the games that we've grew up with and the games that we loved. So my final thoughts on it, you know, it's, it's uh, is it going to be a great machine? Probably is. Probably going to be an absolute contender. I, I see it. As we looked at it now, it's probably going to be the best of the two, the strongest. But does that matter? No. It doesn't matter even when I owe it. Nintendo proved that with the Switch. It doesn't matter about power. It doesn't matter about graphics. Quality games. Quality games is what you want. And that's what we need on this, and that's what we've not been shown. I know Hellblade looks beautiful. I know we've got Halo Infinite coming out. That doesn't mean shit at the end of the day. It really doesn't. PlayStation has console selling games at its disposal that we know are coming out. You know, it might not be immediate, but we know God of War 2 or God of War 5 is coming out. We know there's going to be another Spider-Man. We know there's another Horizon Zero Dawn in the corner. We know Final Fantasy VII is a series of games. We're getting the first one and the last, like, hurrah for the PlayStation 4. But the rest of them are going to be on the five. You know, they have console selling games at their disposal. Xbox, we didn't know. Halo Infinite. If it's anywhere like Halo 5, then I'm going to be fucking upset. I'm going to be really upset that there's just, it's just no getting the story. Like, we need quality games, we need quality stories to, f to be fueled with these machines instead of just amazing graphics. Okay, I mean, it doesn't mean fuck all. It doesn't mean literally, it doesn't mean nothing. Unless there's the games to back up the machine. And that's. That's what we need at E3. No more at all, what has it got? We know what it's got now. We need games. We need Xbox to be in there at E3, showing us an array of games that gets our fucking taste buds drooling. That is what we need, that's what we want. Wanting us to buy this machine, wanting us to invest. Would I recommend you to buy it? No, I would never tell you to buy or recommend or pre-order any console until you see and you're happy with the list of games that's coming out. Like I said before, we Gears 5 and it's lacking exclusives and things like that, things to keep your taste buds going I would always hold off you know it's for me I'm excited for it because I've seen it I know it's potential you know that's that's where I see me invest in it but if I'm only going to be left with game pass games at the end of the day I'm not really going to be that in flux to invest another 500 pounds just invested three on the X you know I'm going to be happy I'm happy with the X the X does graphics and it does games for me that I'm fine with I'm fine with this generation of games you know I'm fine with that 
You know, they're good enough for me. The pinnacle, I thought, until I seen like Hellblade and that just fucking blowing my shit right out of the water. But yeah, as a final thought, just have a look to see what you're going and make the smart decision yourself, guys. So you guys take it easy. I'll see you on the next one. Peace.